Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with another A4000 motherboard. So this is the one you saw that when I received my case, you know, a full cased A4000, and uh, yeah, it's super corroded, very dirty along the back side there. Some horrendous corrosion around here, even the traces and things up here are a bit green. Lots and lots of damage. So I'm not going to show you everything with this, I'm just going to show you anything of interest and then fast forward through the various stages showing you, you know, each bit as it progresses. I'm not going to be spending anywhere near as long as I've done on previous 4000 repairs or restores of this type because you've seen it all before. But I will show you anything of interest where there's something different, some different damage or if we have, when we come to test, if we have a fault and it's something slightly different in behaviour, I'll cover that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's going to be highlights more than anything. And that board originally came from this Amiga 4000, which I covered in the video top right. So I'm going to start by just cleaning around the board with vinegar. I'll show you that because, you know what, we might get some fizzing. It's always interesting to see what happens. I don't think anybody's probably uh, cleaned this up in the past. It just doesn't look like that, does it? It looks like the battery was cut off and then that's it. So, cap of white distilled vinegar. And, uh, yeah, we'll just get a little bit of vinegar on there. And have a little scrub. Yeah, there's no fizzing, so maybe it has been cleaned in the past, or its uh, alkalinity has uh, changed over time, you know, because obviously when it corroded, it was probably like 15 years ago or something. You tend to find that these things corroded really quickly, actually. You know, I had a 2000 back in the day, which the one you've seen the photo of me in my bedroom, actually, when I was a kid, well, a teenager, uh, that A2000. When I first got that, the battery had already leaked on that. And that corrosion was already starting to eat traces and things. And that was, you know, let's say just four or five years after they, they were new. Um, so it just goes to show, it doesn't, they didn't take long to start to corrode. You know, after between five and eight years, the batteries failed on them. And um, you only have to leave the battery corroding like that for maybe six months or a year. And this is what you end up with. Uh, and of course, we'll do the same thing up here as well, because this lots of cap electrolyte and stuff around here and everything's just looking pretty green actually. One thing I would certainly not do on a board like this, never test it. Do not power a board up like this because all you will do is create faults because you've got conductivity between things that shouldn't have conductivity. You've got broken traces, you'll have missing grounds, so therefore you'll create latch-up failures. You know, you could kill the, the, the gals here, you could kill some of the 7.4 series. I mean, it ultimately, we'll need replacing anyway, that 7.4245 there, but you will create more damage or risk, you risk creating more damage just by testing something like this. You know, it's clear that it needs a lot of work. There's no way on hell or on earth, if you switch this on, that it would work. And if it did, you, you are risking it. You're risking damaging something further. So I did a tiny bit of work with a fiberglass pen around here and stuff. I think what I'm going to do next is use the dissolve station, remove the ports here, uh, remove the audio ports, remove this pin header, remove this chip and the resistor array here, um, and then start trying to tin up some of the traces and things around here perhaps, and then I'll, eventually I'll remove uh, the sockets around here, I need to, because the traces here are pretty corroded, so around that area there it's going to be pretty bad. The sockets may need replacing actually just looking at that. Look at the state of that. Yeah, look at the state of those pores. <laughs> they definitely need to come off, don't they? I think we'll start with those awful battery contacts actually. Because they're just sticking up and uh, getting in the way at the moment. Right, let's try that again. It was blocked solely. Uh, and what was causing it actually was flux build up just at the point where the filter goes on the uh, station itself. Yeah, it's working way better now. Let's do that side. There we go, that's that off. So you can see the pin header removed here, resistor pack gone, trim cap removed, 
crystal removed, I'm going to replace that, I might even replace the trim cap. Uh, I really do need to get these things off and replace these as well, but anyway, uh, that has been desoldered, but the solder, you can see it's free here, not here. So I'm going to use some hot air, uh, I don't think that's going to come up as, it, as things stand, I think it's just too risky. Yeah, it's not going to move, so I'll free it with some hot air, I'll show you that. But before I do that, I will just uh, get these supports off. I think this is perhaps the worst I've looked at of these. Others have been uh, nowhere near as badly damaged as this. So I've shown all the techniques for getting these off in the past, but you can see that's free now, I think, hopefully, no damage. Yeah, on this side here, it has attached to the ground plane, actually, or something, there you go. Yeah, you can see that's not too bad. They are awful, clean them up in a sec. There we go, some gradual progress. So I will pull these off as well, but I just wanted to get that one off straight away. You can see it's really bad under there. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll try and clean them up. and. I'm going to have a clean around them with some vinegar and the fiberglass pen next. The chip ram socket could also be affected, the fact it is, can you see up here it's dark? So yeah, all the sim sockets are going to need to come off and at least be cleaned up, but probably replaced. But I wanted to, to get this one off and that one next, I think, just so I can get to the traces here, but yeah, they're horrendous. So this one here, it's going to get my metal tin under there, it just stops the heat transferring to the mat. And we'll use some hot air just to free this up. Um, I'll get these caps and stuff off uh, later as well. So we'll just uh, heat around this, preheat around this to start with. I think actually whilst I'm here, I might uh, remove that 245. I don't know, it's not that important. We're gonna have, there's gonna be plenty of times when I'm gonna go going around here with hot air and stuff anyway, because I might replace these yet, so. You probably do need replacing. They certainly need pulling off, but I'll pull all those four off at the same time. I need to get some caps and tape on those sim sockets, really. Or I might even remove the sim sockets first, and I don't need to caps and tape them off, that makes the most sense. But I'm going at this a different way than I've done with the boards. I am literally gutting it and uh, fixing all the traces and things and then reintroducing either new components or cleaned up components so let's just see if we can uh, get that off there you go once you've freed all the solder up on it they come off really easy with just a little bit of hot air just for a short period like that you can see no damage there's a close-up on that area <laughs> it's horrendous isn't it it is horrendous so this is the point you'll have seen many times before, you know, multi-pass approach, uh, vinegar initially, you know, go around this whole area with vinegar here, then fiberglass pen, then vinegar, then fiberglass pen, then vinegar, and IPA. And then all these pads and things here should come up really clean and the traces should be exposed to be able to tin them. Let's have a go at this area here, this is really bad. I mean, it, it could be superficial, I don't know, until you actually start to clean it and expose some of the copy, you don't really know how bad it is, but that area there has been significantly affected by corrosion, so I am gonna turn over them all. So because there's so much to do, I'm going to be doing this over a number of weeks probably. And taking breaks are like, I've had enough for today on this, <laughs> seriously. You can see, you know, I've started to clean up some of the traces down there. And there's obviously still lots more to clean around here. These old things all need to come off. And we need to start tinning things up. But yeah, I've just started to make gradual progress, tinning up what needs doing. Obviously I need to do around there, but I'll wait until I've got all those sim sockets off before I focus in on that area. I think when I pick this up tomorrow perhaps, I might start tinning some of these things up, yeah, and then remove stuff. 
uh, I think I might remove all the caps in the next go as well. Once we get the hot air and remove some of these things, well, all of these things, I'll remove the SMD caps while I'm there as well, just to get everything off the board that is, uh, you know, likely to cause any corrosion. You can see I start to clean up these things as well, these pads and things around here. So, I don't know, it's not that bad. So, uh, I think it's going to be alright this actually. You know, as scary, as scary as it first seemed, and there's still a lot of damage under here still. So this is about four months later actually, it's amazing how I've spread this out, this repair. You can see I just removed these two SIM sockets here, look how bad the corrosion is there. I mean alright, it is superficial, it's just a white furring. If you were to flush vinegar and stuff under there and then, uh, you know, rinse it off, IPA, rinse it off, maybe blow with air through here with uh, vinegar and IPA, you might be able to clean out the contaminant here but yeah, you can see it's a good idea to remove those. The sim up here is okay, the pins are not green, but look at that bottom one there. See how green that is? That was cleaned. So yeah, we need to pull this off as well. I think once I've done that, I'm gonna remove these three with hot air, remove that, remove that, um, and then remove all of these caps, reflow some of these things here. We can tin up all the traces, tin up the stuff we did here months ago. Um, you know, some of this again has gone green here, cleaned all this up, but this is what happens, you see, because copper, will oxidise, you know it's gone dull there, but there's no corrosion there per se. Yeah, that's going to have to come off, those two will have to come off and get reflowed I think. But then hopefully that's the majority of the danger area, once we've got all this stuff here sorted and reflowed around these CPLDs, you can see that's pretty furry, and around here as well, I mean, may even need to come off yet. Hopefully we might even be able to boot it at that stage. But obviously it'll need a full recap here and uh, it's going to need the uh, ports putting back on. Can you see those have gone a bit oxidised there in the time it's been left around. So I'll just do a bit of that again. Some of these pins I've had to go over two or three times actually. So when you've wobbled these pins to make sure they're snapped off then you can uh, push these plastic things through. So this is the way I've been doing this and they've all come off fine so far with no damage. But of course if the pins aren't free you won't be able to push that through but then you can just feel here if any pin feels like it's raised uh, compared to others they obviously stop because they're not all free but I think they're all free here. It can be really hard to get those to go through, actually. I'm definitely free here, I'm sure it is. I think that's free. The plastic things, the plastic clips, actually can make you think it's not free when it is. Yeah, look, the side's lifting up. And the middle's coming up. That's our flog. It's just over here. Of course, don't force it, look, it's off that. It's this clip here. This is uh, always the bit where it sticks, it sticks like this on all of them. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, no damage to pads or traces or anything as a result of that. So look at the st look at the state of the underneath of that. <laughs> so yeah, they mean he's replacing. So let's clean around there with uh, a little bit of uh, vinegar now. I think it's uh, a bit sticky here. Can you see? It's like the bits of solder, you know, sharp edges. We'll need to get looks on this and have a slide around and try and tin these up. So I'm going to go over with a fiberglass pen at this point actually, just very carefully across the tops here. So I'll just uh, give these a uh, preliminary clean with some uh, vinegar, but we'll get the wire brush onto these as well and uh, I'll give them the ultrasonic. 
So I've cleaned these with vinegar and the fiberglass pen and I'll be honest, they look good as new. But look at the dirt in there, that, that, is, uh, that is cleaning out. I think this is the last thing I'm gonna do in here in this same IPA. You can see where all the dirt settles, but anyway, trust me, because it's IPA, you won't contaminate these. We'll clean them with the ultrasonic and uh, I will replace that IPA at that point. So I'll switch it on. Right, so the next thing we'll do here is, uh, yeah, we'll remove everything around here, really. Well, the big stuff. I'm worried about those little components there. Get a little bit of flux around there. Uh, these may explode. I don't know. Let's just see. Let's see what happens. It may do when you actually touch it with the pliers like that, because you get a thermal, uh, you know, a shock, a temperature change. It goes. It's really hot and it gets uh, heat sunk by the players. Mm, two iron technique might be better for these. Because that is not coming off. There we go, that's that one off. It made a bit of a funny popping noise there. So, yeah, this should be warmed up a bit just because of the proximity to that cap. The fumes coming off that cap actually, can you see that? Or is that from, it might be from the underside of the board. Yeah, that's probably from the underside of the board. Could be some of the flux uh, just going through the players there. Alright, that's that off. Well, let's get this one off. Yeah, I'm not prizing it there, just literally pushing with the, the smallest amount of pressure. Bit of pressure. I think that concludes the stuff that I want to remove from there, but you can see, yeah, I could have got away with the reflow there, and uh, there probably. It's just the stuff that's nearer to this side, but yeah, it was worth taking that off because it was really green around it. And there's some vines here that I want to get proper access to. So yeah, we've got some flux around there, let's just uh, eat and remove that. Again, you should go in the direction the pad is longest, safer to go uh, this way but you know what they're not too badly corroded still some really bad wires around this point here so I need to sort those out but I think I'm just going to shift my attention up here I'm going to use some braid uh, flux some braid remove the uh, solder from there might even remove that yet I don't know uh, same here and uh, reflow these I think these things here make sure the pads here are okay I don't think there's any issues there so I can clean up that chip and get that back on I've just gone over these pins here and these points on these components there with fiberglass pen. So I've got some flux and we'll just uh, reflow those now. But they're looking so much better already those. I still need to do that one, I've still got some flux there waiting. And a little bit of solder on the tip. Add a little drag.
So at this point, just turning my attention to the underside, you can see I've just been cleaning out some of the wires. Can you see the crap that's come on there? Uh, yeah, just using a drill bit that's exactly the same size as these wires here. If I give you an example, that's where the crystal goes. Get it nice and straight. It just slides up and down. So just a quick look on macro, you can see how bad this area is here. Yeah, it's uh, look at the state, isn't it? The cap is awful. Uh, it's crooked as well. So obviously we sold some of the stuff here, but yeah, lots of green points. Look. It's going to take uh, some time to just sort the underneath of this out. I so say here's a part way at the end of today. I'm spending you know just a few hours. Uh, here and there over a year or more actually because I started this last year and when I went June at the moment and it's in July it's not it's June uh, let's just uh, turn that that's why I'm a J when I <laughs> just ended there if we uh, yeah just have a clean here you can see I've just used the fabulous pen and lots of things here and the scratchy tool so yeah it's looking a blooming mess but yeah we'll clean it with some IPA now and then I just uh, put it down and revisit it, you know, clean more of the corrosion off, get it back to copper, and gradually, gradually, I will tin, you know, tin an area, say up here, for example, and then check the other side, tin everything on the other side, check every single one of these wires, yeah, plug what needs to be plugged, and, uh, you know, put wires on whatever needs to be uh, fixed there. But I mean, I'll give you an example. I tested a load of these here, and they all seem joined up on that side of the top side. On the bottom side here, uh, two or three are joined up. One or two have got problems, and the others haven't finished testing. So yeah, more scratching here is required. Turn all this up, redo these wires here. Luckily, these were solder filled, so it's going to be pretty easy resolving that. There's a really dark trace there, though underneath you can see. I bet that's broken. Oh, I bet that's broken. The strange thing is with this, this is the first one where underneath has got more damage than the top side. Don't quite get that. Must have leaked through the wires here and then just, I don't know, done more damage on the bottom side uh, than the top side. So it's uh, a bit of a strange one. Anyway, yeah, bit by bit is the way to go and test everything bit by bit as you reintroduce things. So the wires for the gallery around here, checked all those, they're good as new. And you can see around it as good as new. The wires there are pretty much spotless. I did test every single part of the trace going in and out and stuff. So yeah, I can put that gal back on, technically. Uh, add a bit more solder to these because that got removed when I was using the braid. And that would deal with this bit. I could even get the crystal back on. Um, because I can still test those wires without that being in the way, that's a possibility. I mean, I'm going to get a new crystal on probably. Um, and I could al almost get the real time clock back on. There are a couple of wires here that are questionable though. Uh, I did test the connections on the resistor array, they're mostly all okay. It's just the usual two that run down here that are balked. There's obviously going to be the odd wire here that's definitely balked, you know, leading to these. Uh, and these wires here, some of those may be balked. So I'm going to have to, you know, uh, fill them with a, uh, a piece of coil wire and have a little blob of solder on either side to join them up. Uh, we've got a pad missing there, but I think that's not used on this side. So again, I could get the option jumper back on. So I could start to reinstate some of the stuff bit by bit until we get over here. That's probably what I'll do. I'll finish up with uh, the stuff here and the SIM sockets as well. Obviously I need to finish turning up the right side because you can see this side's silver. Still some more work to, to just inspect and stuff, make sure there's no problems there. And obviously test connectivity because they pass all the way through those, and most of them do anyway. Um, and then just uh, retin these ones here, just to make sure they're all right. Get that off, get that off, get that back on. Clean up that pad, clean up the pads there. I won't stick the caps back on until we're at the end and we're recapping.
Yeah, there we go, that's looking a lot better around there now. Yeah, so for you this is instant, but for me there's been a huge gap of about mm, six months or something. It's incredible how long I've been working on this board. I just haven't been able to bring myself to keep working on it, but I'm determined to get this up and running because I've got other things I want to do that are 4000 related and having a, a test board like this on the bench is far, far, far easier than having to keep tearing down the A4000. Uh, and of course when a 4000 motherboard is in a case, you can't really get access to lots of things, you know, it's really hard to get access to the CPU slot if you want to logic probe or scope anything as part of testing a board or something or trying to resolve a problem with a card. It's, it's damn near impossible. So yeah, this has, like I said, just been sat in a, an ESD bag. It's got hairs and dust and stuff on it in general. I'm now going to just clean the areas I've worked already. We'll get the SIM sockets back on once I've tested the connectivity around here. But I think the next thing I'm going to do is clean this up and remove all the capacitors off it. You know, every single one of these here. I've taken some photos just so I can see how things are laid out here at the moment. I mean, the good news is it hasn't sort of got any worse just by having been sat in an ESD bag. There's still some tinning up that needs doing down here. But I think, yeah, I think I've dealt with most of the corrosion. It's just gonna be the corrosion from the caps now that we need to deal with, so. Yeah, without further ado, I'll get the other iron powered up and we'll remove all of these SMDs. Right, I'm probably going to approach uh, each one of these exactly the same way, and that is to scratch the solder point, just the surface of it. I don't want to scratch the trace that leads to or from it, but if we just scratch the actual solder point, you may think that's pointless, but trust me, it isn't. Because then what you can do is just add either some flux or some solder containing flux. Yeah, there we go, and we get a solder point. Certainly when it's this corroded, so like that one on that side there is not flowing. So I'll just uh, repeat that process here. Scratch the solder. There we go. I'm just waiting to see, it, you know, to can see a shininess to it. Yeah, I realise you probably couldn't see that, but it's a wee bit shiny, so the solder may now flow. Yeah, just about. Right, God, that stinks. That really, really stinks, that capacitor. I think that's the stinkiest capacitor I've ever smelt. Yeah, so I'm going to heat uh, that side and heat that side and just flip it off like that. Anyway, it's one down, about 20 to go. And if you thought is I should have done this right at the start, yeah, you're right. One of the first things to do, really, is get the battery off and get these caps off and then neutralise because you know you could get more corrosion but this is already in such a bad state I was like ah it's not going to make much difference is it I think the caps have already given up all the juice there's nothing in them yeah these are going to be really hard to remove I think uh, well in terms of getting the solder onto these crusty points So I'm going to be replacing those uh, audio connectors. I'm not worried if I accidentally touch one of those. There we go. Hang on. That one off. Yeah, the solder there, it's not melting on that side. Let's try that way around. Oh, there we go. Oh, stuck down now, look. That can be a consequence if you if you accidentally hang on drop it. I did touch that port, but it's getting binned. There we go. Anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, so having removed those ones there, I'm just going to get a wee bit of flux there and use some braid and just clean up the pads really. And then we'll get the fiberglass brush on there and have a good scrub around. The pads are corroded, you could always just you know slide forwards backwards a little bit with the braid. And the friction of doing that will clean the pad up. But of course if you've had to wrestle the pads, you know, wrestle with a cap to get it off, you may find the pads loose, but in this case they're all really good. Because the caps came off really easy with minimal amount of heat. And I'll just give each of those uh, another go actually.
to actually go for that squeaking noise. I've had people come in the past saying, oh it shouldn't squeak, if it squeaks it means you're putting too much pressure on. I actually listen for that, I want the squeak. And you get the squeak, you're getting really good friction. But you wouldn't want to get the squeak if the pad was loose. So I think I'll just clean up with IPA and then I'll have a scrub with the fiberglass brush next. Well that's looking so much better. I'm actually might get away with just a, a reflow around here. It's not too bad. I've seen far worse. I think Cather's board had quite a bit of corrosion around here, all the wires and everything was shot, but Everything around here looks pretty good. Right, this one back here, I'm not even going to desolder that one. I'm going to cut right into it. I'm going to press right down and cut the bottom of it um, without cutting my finger. Like that. The reason being is, is it's so close to that port. Now, I could put captain tape or foil or something and captain tape down there. But just from prior experience, it's really hard. It's really hard to get to that one. The pad is so close to the port, it's nuts. Just trying to get there we go, get the can off. That's it, that's the plastic bit off. And then I can just simply just heat the two legs there and it'll uh, come off. Yeah, so getting near the end of the uh, cap removal here. Don't look down on one of these caps when you're desoldering whatever you do, because they can explode. Just as brand new caps. And, oh, you see what I mean? Let's get the sh out of you know? I mean, these have probably got no uh, electrolyte in them anymore anyway, but when the electrolyte heats up, yeah, trust me, they can explode and they can shoot off. Covered that in the CD32 recap I did on a live stream. There we go and it nearly scared the <laughs> living daylights out of me. You know, they go off like little bullets. Yeah, and then we got two down by the uh, Zorro slots. Because this is all about minimizing the time that you heat the pads for. Just by virtue of doing this, the solder will pretty much go straight onto each of these. get the solder on the right side of the tip. Yeah, famous last words, there's no solder going to either of those though. Yeah, now there is. You just got to heat for a second or two with the bit you've scratched, it then starts to flow. Well, these are pretty bad. So, uh, three left to do. So again, ages later, I'm doing this in bits. It's the only way <laughs> to keep my sanity, really, so in between working on other corrosion repairs. So, yeah, I've just finished the Archimedes and the A3000, so I thought, I want to fix something for me rather than someone else. Yeah, so far all of these are the same length, so there's no chance in mixing them up. Right, I put all those into the large ESD bag. Let's now desolder these two ports. Oh God, it's getting like solid tape. You know, you can't find the end. Where's the end of the solder? It's like an infinite loop. I can't actually find the end of it. So yeah, often, uh, certainly with the corrosion, these, you will lose a pad on if you're not careful. The pads just seem really fragile in this particular area. I mean, they're a funny shape, aren't they? Kind of elongated. So yeah, kind of bob into it until, you know, it wobbles a little bit. And, you know, you can wobble it like that. You never know, I might get this off without any damage. And of course, if it feels like it's not freeing up, just add some flux and use braid. So I may do that in a minute. The 
the interesting thing is, my solder pump seems to be just like absorbing the solder, it's not plump, you know, plunging out. When you push the thing back down, it's the solder's gone. So I can only assume it's inside it. Anyway, it's still working, so. Well, we're right down to the last little bit of flux here. Let's uh, just have a go at these with some braid and flux. It's going to be interesting to see if this thing powers up on its first power on. Because the thing is, you never know whether it had some sort of original fault, you know, like before it got just put into storage and the battery and the caps leaked. You know, for all we know, someone, I don't know, did something nasty with a Zorro card and killed something. Or, you know, even worse, a bad power supply. You get a power supply fault and who knows what could have died on this before the battery got to it. Yeah, I'm thinking those should come off fairly easily now. But, but thinking something in reality are two totally different things. So I'm just going to pivot a little bit like that. And like that. Yeah, they can still feel really firm. <sighs> Trying to get around the right angle. Yeah, those aren't loose, are they? This is where I think I would uh, clean the solder from the tip. Heat a given pin. There they go. And have a little wobble like that. So, we can see that that one's not really moving. So, let's do the same with that one. And that one. I'm not pressing hard here, by the way. Oh. Yeah, I'm fighting off a sneeze again here, which doesn't help while I'm trying to work on this just gently. I'm bound to have lost the pads here. I'll be amazed if I've not lost the pads with all this manipulating. Hmm. Seemingly that's come off without any damage. And the pads are still in one piece. That's a Christmas miracle in spring. So let's just do the same thing here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was, hang on, almost ready to come off. So again, that looks like it's just come straight off. In theory, these could be cleaned up and reused because the outsides there aren't too bad. It's just a bit green here on both of them. Do you know what? I'm going to fit those back on. I'm going to clean those up and fit those back on. And miraculously, no damage here either. And use left hand here just so I don't block the camera. But just having a clean around these things here, they've come a lot better actually. Yeah, these are superficially dirty. The white one I have uh, cleaned up. I'm not even sure you're going to be able to tell. There's no greenness in there at all. It's pretty much good as new. Uh, the way I've been doing this is cut the end off a cotton bud, dip the stalk into some vinegar, and then you can get it up that bit there, like this, to clean that cavity out. You may need to use a few different cotton buds, but it's just wide enough, certainly if you twist it and stuff as well, that you can uh, get all the contamination off. Look at that. So I'll do that with two or three different uh, or more cotton buds. Yeah, what I've been doing is cutting the bud uh, stalk back further and then use another bit. So I'll look at that now. That's all dirty and horrible. And of course you could just soak the thing in vinegar, but I don't think it needs that. It is just superficial because I inspect it with light and magnification. There's hardly anything in it. I'm surprised there's that dirt is coming out there, considering how I've, um, how clean it is on the inside, actually. Yeah, so it's looking a whole lot cleaner that now. And it's the same sort of thing with the sense contact. You can 
looking from the back there you can sort of push downwards like that and you're on top of the little notch that makes the point with the center point of the funnel uh, and likewise you can you know go well you can get a cotton bud straight in there like that as well anyway i'll uh, continue spending a few minutes swinging that up and i'll stick those back on but the final thing will be you know a cotton bud with some deoxit those have got away really lightly because there's nothing coming out on that cotton bud there now but I'm just using some uh, braid, I've got some flux on the uh, chip there and yeah just absorbing the solder Hang on. and having a slide over the pins both on the top of the pins and on the actual point where they join the PCB So whilst it could be clean around here, and you know what, following my own advice, I think what I would do is swap these 220 nanofarads here, but you know what, I'm going to leave them. I'd like a failure at some point if, well, we'll measure, make sure they're not faulty already. But uh, anyway, the key is, this is a test board. It's going to be easily uh, accessible for me to work on moving forward, because, you know, I, I should reflow all these here, but the solder points are cleaned up really well. Yeah, that's not bad. And you know what, scratch that, even though I'm going to leave these components on, I am going to reflow them because they just look awful. Yeah, those look way better. I reflowed around there and a few other things as well. So that's the final uh, part of that area now. I'm just going to get the sockets back on and get the caps into this area as well, I think, whilst I'm at it. So because I'm about to get the ports on and the caps here, I thought we may as well clean here. This is just dirt, there's no corrosion here, you can see the pins look all gold. And all of the stuff here is, is pretty good actually, but yeah, it's very dirty. So I'll clean it on the top with cotton buds first of all, just collect the majority of that dirt. Right, ports back on as straight as I can possibly get them. Bear in mind, I think from factory, these were the wrong way around in terms of the color coordination. I think really the red one is supposed to be there, the white one's there, but the way they all shipped was the white one towards the end, I think. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's what I've gone with. So uh, yeah, that looks all right. I must, have, uh, I must have touched this when I was removing the cap there because there's a bit of a melt mark there. So hmm, I wasn't careful enough with that. And there's a wee sort of dullness to the bottom of the connector here. I've cleaned that and I've inspected and yeah, it looks good. I don't really know what's happened there. It's just a bit of moisture that's got trapped between the connector there and that brass thing or whatever it is that goes on the front. So yeah, I mean, hopefully they're in line here. It looks like they are. And as I said, they're as straight as it possibly can be in both orientations. So again, it was getting a little bit long. So I have to bring parts one to a close here. Cliffhanger, will we get it working in the next part? Well, you know we will. It's not often I give up on a board, but this board was like 18 months to two years worth of work. As you saw with the annotations there, there was like a six month gap, a four month gap, another three month gap. It went on and on and on this repair. Basically, because I just couldn't bring myself to finish it off. But as you'll see in the next part, yeah, maybe we get it up and running. And there are a couple of issues, actually. So it's interesting to look at those. So the next part, hopefully, will be a bit more interesting. I do hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the continuation of the channel, please see the coffee and Patreon links down below. I will catch you in the next video.